This week's Torah portion includes the scene of the Makaleo, the blasphemer, the fellow who got so upset that he went out and cursed God. Initially, the Israelites were unsure as to what penalty to assess. Back in the day when the Beisden, the Jewish court, would on occasion assess the death penalty, that death penalty was an atonement of sorts. And there were certain crimes that were so horrible that the person didn't deserve the death penalty because they didn't deserve an atonement. Like the line in the old movie, hanging's too good for them. I was having a debate over the course of the last week since the Boston Marathon horror with my wife. She says that she feels a little bit of sympathy for the younger brother. He was only 19. He was following his brother's lead. I say back to my wife, you know, I only have so much mercy in my body, and I just can't find any for that guy. Nazi soldiers also said we were only following orders. This isn't like big bro was saying to little bro, have another beer, or let's go pull the wings off of flies. He was saying, let's go maim, mutilate, and kill innocent men, women, and children. So if it were me, I'd skip the trial straight to the electric chair. But my wife is a Jewish mother, so she has more sympathy. And so does the Torah. Back in the story of the blasphemer, while they had that period of uncertainty as to what penalty to assess, the Jews can find the blasphemer in jail. There was another fellow also in jail at the time on death row. He had violated the Sabbath and he was going to be killed. But they made sure not to put these two fellows in jail together because they were concerned if the blasphemer ended up not being guilty of the death penalty, he would suffer some short period of time filled with all sorts of anxiety over being put to death by being on death row unnecessarily. So can you imagine that level of sensitivity, worrying about the emotional mindset, the psyche of a fellow who committed this terrible transgression? And the Torah puts this whole scene in chapter 24 of Leviticus right up against the laws of murder and harming one's fellow to equate cursing God with murder. If someone doesn't recognize God, then they're not going to recognize that mankind was created in God's image. And that can start down the slippery slope and end with murder or mayhem or mutilation. The day after the bombings, I was in my parking lot in Manhattan picking up my car. And while waiting, I struck up a conversation with the new manager of the parking lot. And we were commiserating over the Boston tragedy, the terrible loss of life and limbs. And I said to him, you know, I was thinking all day, I hope that the reason why there were so many amputations wasn't because the hospitals were just too overwhelmed. And don't get me wrong, the doctors and the first responders in Boston were heroes. But hospitals aren't used to getting that number of catastrophic injuries at once. He said to me, you know, I'm from Haiti, and I was there during the disaster, during the earthquake, and I knew many people involved, friends and relatives, and it was beautiful. So many countries sent doctors over to help, Americans and French and British and Canadians, and they'd have conferences and try to figure out what to do, and then with these serious lower limb injuries, they'd end up doing amputations in almost all the cases. But one country was different. The Israelis sent in doctors, and any one of the Haitian patients who was lucky enough to have an Israeli doctor, they saved the limbs. I said, you know, that's bittersweet for me to hear. It's beautiful that the Israelis were able to do that, but it's awful because I know why. Because they have more experience, unfortunately, than other countries dealing with the aftermath of these kind of demented attacks meant to maim innocent people and they're used to going the extra mile. In fact, the doctors at Mass General in Boston said that they were thankful that a number of years before, Israeli first responders had visited Boston and had helped share insights and tutor the doctors at Mass General in disaster preparedness. And so they were more ready than they otherwise would have been. So if these two maniacs thought that they were going to cow or terrorize or destroy the psyche of Boston, then they obviously don't know anything about U.S. history. While they will be in our thoughts and our prayers, those victims of terror, we know Boston will be back. Boston will be strong. Mm -hmm.